Hey guys, it's Miss Alice Wells and welcome back to my channel. So, I have mentioned in a lot of previous videos, I'm very curious to know more about Yoko Ono. Like, she keeps getting brought up and she obviously had a prominent impact in John Lennon's life because her name is literally everywhere. So, I have decided to check out this video and it's called Paul McCartney Reflects on His Feud with Yoko Ono Over the Beatles Split. So this sounds interesting. I'm genuinely like interested to see what's going on. For all that period when people were blaming you for the breakup of the Beatles, well, you know, I've been blamed, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years now. You so know? you were aware of that going on? You were aware oh, that people were Oh, I was fully aware of it because it was like they was jabbing me all the time. So when you met Yoko, yeah. she was she claimed well, she didn't know who the Beatles were, but meanwhile, she knew who the Beatles were she because had met him. she met you. Yeah, well, so, you know, the thing is, uh, I have, like, my version of the story. What is your version? My version is that uh, we were in London, and Yoko came around to my house, knocking on the door. Someone said, there's this Japanese lady outside there. I said, okay, let her in. She came in, and she said, it's John Cage's birthday, and us artists want to collect a bunch of manuscripts to give him for his, whatever it was, 60th or something birthday. Right. And I thought immediately, I thought, I don't really want to do this. Right. So, but my friend, John, might. Right. And that's my recollection that I then said, and he lives here, and she went to see him. The song, uh, Get Back, when you were recording it, Yoko was in the studio. And every time you sang Get Back, John accused you of staring at Yoko, <laughs> and he took it as an insult. Those were very paranoid times, I you know. know. And let's face it, we, we didn't welcome Yoko in the studio. I know. Because we thought it was a guy thing. And if she wants to sit in on the session... Fair enough. It's something that we wouldn't have done. Our girlfriends or wives wouldn't have done that. You know, control room for a quick visit. Right. But actually sit in the in the studio with us, it was like, uh, no, excuse me, um, we're working. Did you, you have know. the guts to say that to John? No. You did not. Uh, if you had said it that... It was kind of obvious, though. Yeah, it's like they're going overboard about it. But John always does, you know. You can't go saying, be sensible about it and don't bring it to meetings. And it was an, it was an unspoken rule that you wouldn't sit in on a session. But... So Yoko was doing it, so I think it created uncomfortable moments. It's difficult starting right from scratch with Yoko there, because I started out writing songs about white walls, <laughs> just because I, you know, I think she, John and Yoko would like that, you know. I mean, this is not an ordinary relationship. Wow. She's not an ordinary woman. Wow. You've got to admit That's that. That's a crazy thing to say. This is not an ordinary relationship. She's not an ordinary woman. Wow. I'm writing songs about white walls, <laughs> just because I, you know, just because I think she, John and Yoko would like that, you know. I mean, this is not an ordinary relationship. She's not an ordinary woman. You've got to admit that. Yes, but th th weren't you acting out passively, aggressively? You're sitting in the studio. You're just steaming, rather than saying, John. In a kind of a loving yeah, way, this is yeah. help, this is not this is hurting me. I can't work this way yeah. to have someone observing. Everyone was just kind of sniping. We were just fuming. Right. Well, and John, sulking and being kind of, you know. Did John ever say, look, I'm bringing, he didn't ask permission to do no, it. No, he didn't. It, you know, the thing is, it was really just the initial shock of Yoko sitting on one of the amps. Right. You know, excuse me, that's my amp. <laughs> yeah. Um, she couldn't use a stool. Oh, I but, would um, be mind-blowing, Paul. It was, it was mind-blowing. But, um... You've never really blamed Yoko for the breakup, as a lot no, of people no, no. did, have you? No, I think, you know, at the beginning it was difficult because John in particular was ready to do something else. And when Yoko came along, uh, part of her attraction, I think, was the sort of avant-garde side of things, which she was famous for and still is. Um, so she showed him another way to be that was very attractive to him. And I could see that, you know, she's just sort of said, well, no, look, you know, 
how about this? Don't you like this? Are you just a rock and roller? And John loved strong women. Yes. His uh, mother had been a strong woman. His auntie who brought him up had been strong woman. And bless her, but his first wife wasn't. She would once said to me, you know, I, all I want is a sort of a guy who want the pipe and slippers. Right. Come Stay home, home and yeah. do that. And I thought, whoa, that's not John. You got the wrong and guy. And so John had met up with Yoko. And, and so I think it was time for John certainly to leave. I, my feeling was he had to clear the decks too. Because if he used to work with Yoko, he couldn't have these sort of beetle-like appendages. Yeah. Because, carrying, coming around with because, him. What, because she, he had to give his life to Yoko. Yeah. This was the nature of the relationship. I think. Nature of her demand, you think? No. No, his, yeah. his demand. Don't, don't get, people get that wrong, you know. John was hopelessly in yeah. love with Yoko, yeah. you know. See, but their point is that they, they're trying to, like, be as near together as they can. They want to stay together, those two, isn't it? So it's all right, let the young lovers stay together. But it's not that bad, you know. We've got a lot out of people. So that it, I think John's saying no, but obviously it came to a push between Yoko and the Beatles. It's Yoko, you know. But I, she certainly didn't break the group up. The group was breaking up, and I think mm. she attracted John so much to another way of life. I think we would wow. have all continued the Beatles, but Yoko came along, John fell wildly in love with her. Wow. He needed a big, big change in his life, and he got it. Wow. He came to live in New York, he kind of threw over all his English um, contacts and everything, and, and you know, you can't blame him. That's what he wants to do in his life. So we, we had to kind of uh, fade into the background to allow them to have their relationship. What are we gonna do, ringing him up? Hey, John, you know, hey, come and see me. Leave Yoko. You know, I mean, yeah. that obviously never gonna happen. Now, John never had another songwriter other than you, right? Did he ever write with anyone? Yoko. Or? Yoko, okay, but other than Yoko. Um, you were the only. I, I think, yeah, possibly. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. This, the only it's near enough true. To, Besides Yoko, to, I think yeah. I was the only other person here. Yeah. Eventually, you even came to say that you feel Yoko was instrumental in John's solo career because uh, the inspiration for Imagine and all of that, you feel, came from Yoko, that he, yeah. he, that was his muse, so to speak. That he then went on to do very successfully and had a sort of second part to his career, writing things like Imagine and doing uh, Give Peace a Chance. I don't think he would have done that without Yoko. She was taking him in a completely new direction. Ah. Right. Sort of avant-garde, all stuff we'd liked, all stuff we'd admired in other people, but suddenly he had a ride on this bus. Before Lennon's death, he and Yoko lived in New York, where she managed their business affairs, and rumors of a strained relationship with McCartney persisted. Recently, McCartney and his wife, Linda, met with Yoko for a reunion. Should not everyone have been surprised? I mean, are, are you... That's what everyone seems to think. I, we, Yoko and I are sort of at war, you know. Um, I think it's based on events of the last kind of 10 years. Um, no, during the last year or so, we've, we've uh, had a better relationship than we've ever had, probably. Yeah. Uh, we just find we're suddenly able to talk to each other. It's, it's a weird thing, really, but uh, she's a nice lady. We didn't know her too well, really, uh, until quite recently, until maybe... Um, a few years ago. ...the 80s, you know, beginning of the 80s, when I just thought, well, maybe I've misunderstood. Maybe it's my mistake. Um, not hers. So I telephoned her and started talking to her about just things generally. She said, why are you telephoning? And uh, I said, well, you know, I think I've misunderstood you and I think I've made a big mistake. And uh, as you were John's wife and uh, I was very fond of John, I feel that he would have liked me to telephone you and, and kind of say hello and see what's going on. And she said, well, don't do me any favors, you know, don't do it out of pity or don't sympathy. I don't want that, you know, I don't want charity. Which at first I thought, hmm, hmm. <laughs> you know, and it got, and I had to say, no, no, she's right. She's right. I thought she was a hard woman. So. I don't think she is now. Oh. Think she's just the opposite. I think she's a very uh, wow. loving, caring woman. Uh, I think I thought she was... Uh, 
pushy, uh, which I think is wrong. I don't think she is. I think she's just uh, herself. She's determined more than some other people to be herself. Some people will um, just give in. In this reasonably bizarre clip, when the reporter informs Sean and Yoko that Paul McCartney has just been knocked off, what he actually means to say is that Paul's current record has slipped a bit in the charts. In view of John's murder, of course, it may have been a poor turn of phrase. Paul McCartney's, Paul McCartney's just been knocked off, and your dance going to number six. <laughs> Lovely. I'm well, still rising. Sorry, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I feel terrific. <laughs> Do you in fact laugh at her years later when she said, I didn't know who Jean was, I don't know Beatles, I never heard? You knew yeah. that that was not true. I don't know, man. I tell you, you know, you know, live and let live. It's too, too sort of, you know, life's too short for all that stuff. You mm. know, we've been through But you also have that. to share, you have to call her regularly to do Beatles business, right? So you have yeah. to get along with her. Yeah, to some degree. So exactly. in fact, you said here today that mm. Yoko, in fact, wanted you sexually and in fact <laughs> knew who the Beatles were. Yeah. It would probably screw up your business dealings. I'd with be her. dead meat. Yeah. yeah, you would be dead, dead meat, meat in those meetings. No, it's, uh, you know, we haven't got the greatest relationship. That's true. But we get on. We're OK. You do? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Here tonight, it's a privilege to come along and to do this. Um, John, no matter what people thought of him from minute to minute, was a very, very beautiful person. And it's an honor to uh, be able to do this with uh, Yoko and Sean. May I say this, that I really think it's grand that he's come here, and I'm very happy about that, and I think that Joe would have been very pleased. Later on, we, we suddenly sort of thought, you know what, John's in love with this girl, if he wants to bring her in the studio, we've got to cope with that. Mm. And we learned to cope with it, and you know, I now feel that he had the right to do that. Um, it might have been better if he'd been a little bit more diplomatic and sort of says, hey guys, you know, I'd love her to be, I, I, I really love her and I just want to be near her all the time. Right. But we had to figure that out. I was totally in love with her. Yeah. And you know, you, you've just got to respect that. So we did, and I do. Paul came out, Paul McCartney came out and cleared the air a little bit and said, look, you know, for those people that who That was are, very sweet of him to yeah. do that. I'm sure that, you know, she got tons of letters saying, how dare you say that? I mean, you know, because they like the idea of us being in a boxing ring, you know, sort of fighting. Also, it's good to have, like, people like having someone to demonize. People like having yeah, someone yeah. to blame, you know, and you were, you were the easy target, I guess. Well, you know, we know each other for such a long time, and, and she's a very sensitive and intelligent guy, so, of course, you know, she understands what was going on, yeah. that it wasn't going on. What looks like a Beatles breakthrough after all these years, one of music's longest running feuds just might finally be over. It's been oh, a long wow. and winding road, but Paul McCartney says he has worked it out with Yoko Ono, That's nice. ending one of rock and roll's greatest feuds. No. In the latest issue of Rolling Stone, McCartney says the key to reconciling with John Lennon's wife was time the great healer. McCartney tells the magazine, I thought if John loved her, there's got to be something. He's not stupid. And he added, it's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to hold on to a grudge you never really had? We were just pissed that the Beatles were breaking up. Ono has long been blamed as the reason for the band's breakup. I think that he genuinely did a kind of accounting of, you know, various things that have gone on in this crazy long life that he's had. And he decided that it wasn't worth it to have this unfinished business. Interesting. Journeys, except that love is blind, thanks to an enemy, no, it's also death. As time goes by, I understand and appreciate Paul's personality more and more often. Perhaps we owe him most, we owe him the most for the Beatles. Paul McCartney is generally a beautiful person. Yoko's cruelty towards Julian revealed her dark heart. John was no better for his own abandonment of his son. Although I loved his music, I didn't respect John's selfishness and lack of integrity. Also found it shocking that Yoko planted herself in the studio while they worked. She had so much control over John that he went along with this fragrant disrespect of his band mates 
Yeah, I mean, if it was something that was clearly bothering the rest of the people in his group, which could potentially influence their relationship, it can potentially influence their work, I don't understand why he would continue to let Yoko kind of have that element of control and cause that much... cause that much problem, you know, because it is clear that... Um, it's clear that her presence wasn't very welcomed and people didn't really want her there. So yeah, I think that was a very interesting video um, and it's good to kind of know a little bit more about the dynamic that they had with Yoko. Like I said, she strikes me as a very interesting person because she seems to have a lot of control over John Lennon in particular, which I find very, very interesting. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know down below if you guys enjoyed this little like Beatles journey thing that I'm going down, you know, I'm like trying to get to know more about the Beatles and understand what is really going on. Obviously, I'm aware now that John Lennon was killed which is really, really sad and i'm learning more about yoko i'm learning more about the relationship so as always you know recommend me videos to watch on the patreon if you want to talk to me directly and um i'm gonna love you and leave you guys bye